Hello guys, my name is Karen. I am the Muslim Reaver on Instagram. I feel like a lot of you guys are gonna come from there. I just wanna say thank you to everyone who has helped me um, understand Islam more. I don't have any Muslim physical friends around me and the closest masjid is like 40 minutes away so it's really hard for me to find a community especially here in south carolina i don't see a lot of muslims here maybe because i'm more isolated um but yes it's really hard for me i've seen i can count on my hands how many muslims physically i've seen here but yes i i wanted to share my story because i um i feel like there's not a lot of people who do share the stories I converted in December 28, 2020. Let's rewind eight months before I took my Shahada. I wanted to get closer to God. The only way I knew how to get closer to God was to study the Bible. This story is going to be all over the place because I didn't take any notes. So hopefully I can get everything into this one video. But um, my parents are Christian. They aren't really devoted. I never really went to church. My family on my mom's side are really devoted. I have two uncles that are pastors and I never really liked church. <laughs> Especially because it was always in Spanish and Spanish is my second language. It just goes in one ear and out the other so I never really you know, had the chance to really understand Christianity, the concept of it. So, eight months before I took my Shahada, I really wanted to get closer to God. So I decided to buy a Bible. Went to church, but because of COVID and all that stuff, I joined Elevation Church, which is a church in North Carolina. I live in South Carolina, but they would broadcast church online. So every Sunday, Saturday, I would go to church. Until one day, this video popped up. It was a Muslim versus Christian debate. It was two hours. I kept delaying the video. Uh, it just kept popping up and popping up. Um, I was like, why is YouTube recommending me this video when I'm just starting to get closer to God? But I gave the video a chance, looked at the video fully, and that's when I started to get doubt. It just made more sense. So I started looking more into Islam. People like Ali Dawa, Muhammad Hijab. Sorry if I'm speaking a little quieter. I think my dad just came home. Okay, um, yeah, it was just watching a lot of videos of Islam. Me praying a lot. The only way I knew how to pray was, you know, get on your knees, put your hands right here, pray at night. The one thing about me is that I always pray for guidance. I always prayed to God to lead me to the right path um, and I always told him that I trusted him yeah eight months later I took my Shahada it was it wasn't a set time I took my Shahada at midnight I was crying um, I think I was just crying of the fact that I just wanted to get closer to God but I didn't know how <sighs> Why am I getting emotional? I'm not at, even at the emotional part, but yes. Um, when I woke up, I freaked out. <laughs> I freaked out, I'm like, whoa, I don't even know how to pray. I don't even know how to do this. I don't even know how to do that, so. Um, but I learned very quickly because of fear. I didn't want to make a mistake. And I basically started the new year as a Muslim. I really felt like I needed to wear the hijab. So I, came out to my mom of course you know um all mothers want to take care of you when they don't know what you're doing she kept saying that um jesus was god i can't explain it it's not ignorance but it's more like i know this is right so you can't change my mind and that was my mom so there was a lot of tension between me and my mom for a while and but I still wanted to wear the hijab. I think she started to notice that I was going out with, you know, baggy clothes more. She would cry and I would feel very, very bad about um, making her feel bad. A little background about my mom. She always 
had suicidal thoughts. My mom had a really bad childhood, so I don't blame her for that. I remember it was late January. Um, she came up to me crying and she asked me if, what, if I was still Muslim. Um, she kept saying that um, I was giving her depression. I was making her feel bad. She told me that the day before she, that day, um, she tried to commit suicide. Um, she went out at 4 a.m. She got into one of our cars, I don't know which one, um, and she contemplated going out and crashing into something. It was almost like she was blaming it on me, but she didn't directly say it. So she kept asking me, am I still Muslim? Am I still studying Islam? And at that point, I just decided to say no, that I'm no longer Muslim and that she doesn't need to worry about it. I hadn't even been Muslim a month. But I learned how to pray very quickly. At this point in my life, I didn't have a job. So I prayed my five prayers every single day. So praying, sorry. <laughs> Going from not praying to praying every day and trying to do good deeds for your parents. Um, it was very overwhelming, very, very overwhelming. Um, I don't remember if it was after or before my mom came up to me with, um, you know, that and I had to lie. And I told my dad about it. Um, he's, if you guys don't know me very well, I read a lot of books. And um, he told me that I was getting influenced too much and that the devil was influencing me. I was just in shock because he was my, um, he is my dad. He was, he's the more lenient out of my mom. I was telling him about the Quran and then he told me to throw away that book or I'll throw, throw it away for you. And I didn't know what to say. Uh, coming from the people who you love the most is really hard to hear. Since COVID and everything, I was struggling a lot to find a job. The bills I used to pay, I could no longer pay for it, so my mom took it over. It was a lot of stress um, on her. Understandably, I caused a lot of that stress as well. I kept asking Allah, please give me a job I'm happy in. Another thing I prayed for is for some Muslim friends or someone who is Muslim to come around, you know, so I could have that comfort in someone so i ended up getting a call from the retail store i applied for i went to that job hourly pay was very very low um it was nothing <laughs> i would not be able to pay the bills that i used to have if i got that job and it was only part-time so that was even you know worse i wouldn't be able to get enough to pay for everything you know the, the manager there he was very disrespectful very dismissive i got up and left <laughs> as i was walking out i just burst in tears you know i had been applying for hundreds of jobs by this point i just wanted something to go right so i was crying in my car asking aloud why why he did this i when i've been praying a lot why is he not letting me be happy is basically crying and blaming Allah for everything so I get a call not even a day later it's uh, from the same retail store but on a different location I don't think I had any hope I was just so mad at Allah I have a scheduled interview for that following day and uh, when I get there the manager she's really nice she makes me laugh a couple times she asks me do I want to be a supervisor? At first, I'm like, I'm 19 years old. Why are you asking me? You know, I'm not fit for that position. And I'm like, yeah, um, what are the duties? So she goes in and starts explaining everything to me. 
and it happened so fast she gives me all the paperwork she says she's gonna call me back when my background check is in so she takes me out and she introduces me to everyone who's working in the back everyone i'm supposed to supervise there are these three women the moment i saw them i could not stop looking at them there are three muslims the way i could tell is from the um veil obviously yeah, these women were a lot older i don't even think they know how much they impacted me because i asked a lot for friends <laughs> i asked a lot to at least let me see a muslim have a muslim around me for comfort because it just felt like the whole world was against me for the short time there was they were there they did bring me a lot of comfort uh, they didn't know english a lot but they helped me out with uh, pronunciations uh, they were very welcoming once i told them like hey i'm muslim as well and i really really appreciated them and then i left it was it happened really really fast i had all my paperwork my resume in my hand everything in my hand and i got in the car and again i started crying can you tell i'm very sensitive this time i was crying and i was just asking allah to forgive me for being mad to this day i still work in this place i'm happy I'm really happy there. Allah gave me everything I asked for in one day. Now I learned to trust Allah more. Now I know that Allah listens. I have showed my mom how I would look like in hijab and understandably she did not like it. She told me that I was very beautiful and that there was no reason for me to cover it up. How will I ever get a husband if he can't see me? I'm Latina, so we're supposed to be very proud of our bodies. I came out to her very fast. Um, I hadn't even been Muslim a month. It's very hard. It's still very hard. And I'm still learning. I did uh, stop praying for a while. I felt like um, Islam was destroying my family. There's a, always a constant tension in the house. To this day, it's very hard to be uh, very openly Muslim. I want to wear a hijab. I want to cover up more. I know it will take a toll on my family. Growing up, I uh, my mom was the babysitter. So <laughs> after school, I'd come home and have to help her with the kids. She would take care of five to seven kids. So it was very stressful on me and um, definitely very stressful on her. Um, I would come home from school and just dread coming home because I knew my mom. <sighs> Anxiety, stress, it just all weighed down on me. It was just constant worrying. Is she okay? At school, all I thought about was my mom. Every time my friends would ask me, hey, you want to go out after school? I'm like, no, I got to go home and take care of my mom. My mom, she's tried to kill herself multiple times. So when I told her I was Muslim and I saw how much it affected her, I just lied. Then just a few months later, I stopped praying it, it just became very overwhelming for me it's still very hard for me now because i don't i don't have any muslim physical friends around me that's why i built the community that i have now you guys have helped me a lot i am glad i can have someone to talk to online i am so happy that i'm able to ask anyone questions and be able to get the answers in seconds. I appreciate everyone who's DM'd me, DM'd me on Instagram or anyone who has uh, talked about their story as well because I wish I could hear more stories about Muslim reverts um, like me who are um, 
still struggling. I feel like I have a lot to make up for. I didn't participate in Ramadan. I have started praying again, but I don't want to overwhelm myself. I wanted to do everything perfectly and I rushed myself. So it always felt like, is it um, Islam or is it my family? I feel like I failed both. I failed Allah because I abandoned prayer. I failed my parents for not being the perfect daughter, for not making them happy, for making them disappointed in me, for making them depressed, scared. For all the reverts out there, just keep praying, keep pushing. Allah is gonna test you. Allah tests the ones he loves. It's gonna be hard. Just don't rush things. Some people will not accept you for who you want to be i am 20 years old i'm still very young my dream is to you know have kids that are muslim and me being the first you know muslim family in my family but yeah to the born muslims don't take advantage <laughs> To anyone who's going through uh, stuff with their family, oppression, just know that Allah will always be there. Allah is always there. Make dua. <laughs> never stop making dua. Never stop praying. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have anyone else, you have yourself and you have Allah. And that's pretty much all you need. I just want to say thank you for watching, thank you for listening.